Kiri Kennedy Abuya from Rwanda here. Yes, uh, I'm around, sir. Okay, go ahead. Uh, all right, uh, maybe just to bring everybody up to speed um, under that thematic area or working group, we approach it from uh, different levels. First, I think the issue of the structure is already been ex exhausted. And I think I can pick that from uh, the contributor just immediately after the first presentation of Dr. Kweyabi. Now, the second phase is the regulatory and policy framework. And we approach it from what are the, you know, uh, the, 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 the the, the quick ways of having you know, certain issues addressed, we realize that um, some of them go deeply into the constitution and that might take time. And I think we are aware, all, all aware that um, constitutional amendment or the processes are very much complicated. So we said, okay, the ones that are attached to the constitutional changes, we shall put, put them. However, they may not give us immediate, I mean, immediate um, uh, progress. So we went down to uh, other uh, acts of parliament and we um, um, looked into a number of them that um, require you know, some review and particularly in terms of Im uh, improving the engagement of diasporans, incentives, as well as their participation. Uh, we looked at uh, the issue of the investments, which I think someone talked about that how can it, uh, the Investment Promotions Act, can it maybe be amended to, look, uh, to create space for the diasporians? If there may be some you know, special considerations or a desk therefore to be put in terms of motivating, you know, in, uh, giving incentive to Kenyans to come back investing home with some special considerations, tax rebates on certain aspects, processing of permits and land, whatever. And also in, uh, in the view that uh, most of the diasporians are depending on their family members in terms of you know, carrying out their projects, some of which have not been very successful. So how can you know, the new uh, diaspora affairs department now come up with a solution to that regard? We looked at uh, different laws, particularly um, uh, the, the, the political uh, uh, parties act. And uh, we were you know, investigating how would, would it be possible basically to have diaspora representation beyond just the, the department, the state department? Could we have, let's say, Senate? We know, all know now that we have the diaspora committee within the, the National Assembly, which is so much commendable. But as we have the special you know, interest groups, we have youth, persons with disabilities, you know, uh, we have uh, you know, women and so forth. So can't we have also diaspora being given some special consideration just beyond the state department? We have that be done at the Senate level, at the National Assembly level, because certain issues that are being tabled that really touch on our interest may not really um, be um, discussed very well within the floor of the house if we only rely on the state department, considering our political structure, whereby you know uh, it's not yet even confirmed whether these um, uh, CSS are going to be given opportunity maybe to appear before the parliament and so forth. And then we also looked at the mobility, labor mobility. Uh, we consider that there's, a, there's an act, uh, sorry, there's a bill in the parliament which uh, looks at the labor mobility of the Kenyans. So here we looked at the two aspects. Apart from uh, curing the mischiefs, for instance, the issues um, around um, Saudi Arabia and, and so many of similar nature. What if now also looking at the positive, how can this bill not only cure the mischiefs that are there, but also facilitate you know, Kenyan, uh, Kenyans to move uh, you know, to other you know, potential destination countries in search of greener pastures? And how can that bill now be used maybe for Kenya to you know, maximize on its um, uh, human capital index, which is quite very high considering the other you know, spaces in the region? And also, we looked at now uh, generally uh, among other uh, cross-cutting issues, for example, uh, issues about, uh, if we talk about labor mobility, because this is one of the most uh, you know, critical areas for us. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, you know, uh, remittances. It's all about the work that makes Kenya remit. But now the issue of labor in diaspora, does it belong to the Ministry of Labor? or it should be belonging to the Ministry of Diaspora Affairs. So these are the issues that we are really investigating. And um, I think as Dr. Koyabi has said, without you know, taking much time, we shall prepare this. And of course, when he's going to share the, the, the final document, you're gonna find when we have already expounded on this and uh, it will give you an opportunity to maybe to, 
you know, explain more. So those were just but the tidbits, but uh, much more is in the document, which I may not really go because that we have also spent a lot of time in this. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Bonawakiri. And uh, before I give it to uh, Dr. Rangat for the global coordination, I see in attendance, uh, Councillor Liz Kangede probably give you a minute. I don't go beyond a minute. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, happy to see so many of us and uh, the participation was good. And like I said, I think we need to do more of this and more often. Um, I actually don't want to give that comment that you want me to. I had a question I had, I really felt that needed to be addressed. And this is to do with the political side, which uh, maybe some of you know, or you do not know, I'm an elected councillor for the last 12 years and a past mayor. So I was really concerned with the, the issue of um, voter registration. I was involved and we know that there was an issue that needed to be addressed there and then. Now what happens in, a, you know, we all know in, our, in the Western world, immediately after one general election, there is continuous voter registration to avoid the problems that we had this year. So I would commend, you know, and I know that is there, Martin, I know Dr. Koyambe, that is part of what we are planning in the political line to make sure that we start now and now voter registration, and then it's going to be continuous so that we do not have that last minute push, which we had last time and so many of us were left out. And that will also give us time to consider the young people who do not have Kenyan passports so that you're not rushing as a last minute thing. So that is an area that I'm very, very passionate about so that in future, I mean, don't say it's still a long way. We need to have that. We do that here. Already we have finished with our elections and now the voter registration is ongoing. So that is very, very, you know, it's, it should be now and now so that we do not have that problem at the end. So really, thank you so much everybody for joining in. I really want to be part of that and I've been part of that governance and politics because we can consider and see what more can be done. We can compare obviously the things, the do's and don'ts. So thank you so much to everybody joining. I was given a minute, I'm a politician. I could talk for Africa, but the voter registration is my thing so that we don't wait and you know, the last minute. And again, we make sure that we decentralize that so that we are able to reach out particularly states. You know, I know, I know what the problems we had. We had very, very poor turnout. Do we wait until that day when we say, okay, because people cannot register, people cannot travel to register. But if we start it now, and I know there is a new IEBC group being formed, they should use the manpower that we have here. We have our young people here who can be used. They can be given those jobs to continue start registering diaspora or the areas of diaspora. So I'm really passionate about that. And I know something will be done and it's going to be incorporated in our, in our manifesto. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Her Highness uh, Kangede. Uh, now I will welcome uh, Dr. Langat, Global Coordination. Thank you, Engineer Donga, for this opportunity. I'm impressed with what we have achieved uh, this evening. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is uh, Dr. Moses Langat. I'm based in London, where we get to be served by uh, the mayor who just finished talking. I am the UK EU uh, coordinator. We've been working together with the secretariat, which all of us saw that uh, Senator Veronica Minor uh, do acknowledge. From the coordination uh, perspective, I know from the US, we had uh, we have our friend David Gikonyo. I don't know whether he's around. And then, of course, we have people from around the world, including Southern Africa, uh, East Africa, the Gulf, and elsewhere. So I think uh, we all did well to where we are to coordinate things to ensure that the uh, Kenya Kwanzaa government one, now it is the government of the day, and therefore the coordination now changes to service delivery. And uh, my brother, Dr. Martin Koyabe, has uh, presented the document that has uh, been developed by the many people and uh, well 
coordinated, compiled by him, Jason and Jane Wanja, who have been the leaders in the working groups to ensure that we have that document. So going forward and not preempting anything, uh, we will have a leaders meeting with the principal secretary uh, nominee immediately when she finishes uh, our vetting and gets sworn in. And uh, the, the leaders will present these uh, uh, details to her. But at least what we're going to do going forward is for those people who have ideas, which they will fail to share with us today, they can channel those ideas to Martin and Jason and Jane. And of course, they can do that through any of the of their local leaders. I know that we've got our brothers who are probably not part of uh, the, the, the Kenya Kwanzaa agitating group that led, of course, to the creation of the State Department. Now we are brothers and sisters and we are going to work together. I acknowledge presence in the room of uh, our neighbor here, Bernard Kavyu, the diaspora for agitator for many years. And I think now we would like to have all those inputs on the table so that we can ensure that we have a, a, a fully inclusive uh, document that we are going to push to ensure that uh, it's uh, amend, I mean, taken up by the State Department. I think most important is to understand that the State Department is empty once the PS nominee uh, takes into the office. She And she used our own words, for those of you who are not here, saying that she's going to do visiting days, coming to different parts of the world to be able to lie us with us. But before she does that, we from the coordination desk, we will work very, very hard to ensure that uh, we have this session. And I think uh, up to that point, uh, I want to really acknowledge uh, the, 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 the leadership that ensure that we had this meeting, but perhaps maybe also from the coordination perspective, uh, we had the president here, in the UK when he came for the Queen's uh, funeral. And he gave us audience. We had audience for all of us. Me, Mayor, uh, a nurse called uh, Polka, I think Polka is here, and Sam Rono as well. And we went there, keep, kept agitating that the diaspora be uh, respected and given uh, space in the table to be able to present their issues. And I think at the time we were discussing where uh, the diaspora affairs were, was going to be domiciled. And now we know that it's domiciled in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But one thing that we would want to point out for people to be at ease is within this document that Martin probably didn't uh, mention, we're going to work very hard that we have uh, separate desks for the diaspora and push for creation of the diaspora attaches so that we are not lumped with, with, uh, with immigration issues or trade issues or other things. So we can have a desk and that particularly will address anything from uh, social welfare and culture and feeding down to capturing on the portability of skills and experiences and knowledges that we probably want to take down for those people who have those and they want to take it so we can have those desks as the coordination points. And uh, we will agitate family. We know that uh, we have a lot of work, including uh, even budgetary uh, propose proposals towards implementation of the things that we are going to suggest. So the more we unite, the more we work harder and come together to ensure that uh, we have a consolidated minute. document. Thank you, Donga. So I think uh, this is a good start now that we know we are expecting to deliver for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, right from the guys who are in the Middle East, uh, in the Gulf who are having those issues. And I think uh, the more we pray for one another and support each other, we're going to do that. So I don't want to take more time. Donga, thank you. And uh, thank you for everyone for their contribution. And I look forward to engaging again in the next few days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rangat. And uh, we want to remind our audience that uh, we are open. Uh, we are not in a campaign mode, so everybody feel at home. So at this juncture, I'll uh, <clears throat> invite Wanja on uh, welfare. Please, Wanja, take three minutes if you can. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Engineer Donga. Hi, everyone. My name is Jen Wanja, uh, based in Massachusetts. And mine is simple. Um, I was facilitating uh, the committee, the, uh, the working committee on uh, the social welfare and culture. 
And uh, we mainly focused on looking at um, how can we as Kenyans in the diaspora uh, promote the welfare of the Kenyans uh, across uh, the group. And I have a bigger team and most of them will be able, uh, some of them will be able to highlight that. So one of the key highlights was looking at the social welfare system for Kenyans living in the diaspora. And one of the strategy actions that we were able to deliberate on is uh, exploring into looking into specific health insurance sub scheme, probably even within the NHIF, which can be used uh, by Kenyans uh, who travel abroad or Kenyans who are in the diaspora. And we had more in mind, especially uh, the Kenyans living in the Middle East, uh, based on the crisis that we have seen there. And also in, also in regard to welfare, looking at how can we establish as diaspora uh, an emergency relief fund for Kenyans living in the diaspora. And this is an area of further discussion. Uh, where would that fund come from? Would it come from the taxes? Would it come from contributions? That is something uh, still we are yet to uh, continue that discussion. And also look at establishing and managing a 24 hour emergency service for distressed Kenyans living in the diaspora. And this again uh, came out of uh, issues that are very clear and very close to us in regards to what is happening into the Middle East. Uh, how can we establish a support system that cares for all these individuals who are in distress? We have lots of uh, us who are in the professions that can be able to step in. We have seen people going back home and they are depressed, PTSD, out as a result of the experiences in the Middle East. What can we do as diasporas? How can we support those people? And how can we establish a crisis intervention program for that matter? And some of the deliverable outcomes that we have looked into is um, in partnership, of course, with the Ministry of Diaspora, in partnership with the government. How can we review uh, or constitute a technical working group uh, from representative agencies, government uh, employers to monitor and implement some of the labor laws. We all agree some reforms need to be looked into uh, in the labor reforms. And how can we also enhance our technology and infrastructure to promote Kenyan's welfare? How can we develop also and implement or even blacklist and whitelist uh, recruitment agencies and employees uh, who are not following uh, the expectations. And also looking into revising, working with the government and the ministry to revise the standard employment contract and to reflect the guarantees, especially the labor reforms in Middle East countries. Um, and some of the key indicators uh, that we have been able to highlight that would tell us that, is it working well? Uh, are we doing something? Uh, in this partnership is looking at uh, also establishment of uh, bills in parliament with the help of our senators and uh, our registered members, uh, seeing an increased enrollment through NHIF, uh, probably showing uh, decreased incidences of distress calls that we get all the time uh, from Middle East, uh, and also reports from commissions probably that can be formed to look into the issues of the, uh, the Kenyan's welfare in the diaspora. What and also the go one minute to go. Sure. Now, and also creating a pleasance of diaspora through community outreach and setting the right infrastructure. And I'll yield to um, someone else. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you, Wada. Uh, now I'll go to the main one here, uh, Dr. Dyson on economy. Uh, Jason has uh, asked for Sam to replace. Okay, Sam Ireri, Sam Ireri, please, and uh, you have three minutes. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this was a broader, uh, broader topic that uh, uh, the working group enhanced. And first and foremost, I want to give thanks to Dr. Jason Musioka uh, from South Africa. He was the lead uh, on this. Uh, and then uh, he's the one actually who kind of led everything on this log frames that we had. Uh, I know time is against us. And I also got a message from the main host that we were supposed to have wrapped up the last 14 minutes. So what I'll do, I'll just highlight the key things on it. And then uh, as uh, Dr. Martin Koyabe stated, we will share the documents and 
uh, get input from every, everybody too as well. So one of the things that uh, we were looking at, uh, if I can start here, um, was to establish investment channels for uh, Kenyans in the diaspora. And with this, we looked at several things that we could do. One was to uh, implement a diaspora bond. We've talked about this diaspora bond for a while. And um, just to highlight on this, this we were gonna be working with the National Treasury to ensure that this is, this is done. Uh, and the, the, the key thing on this was uh, ensure that if, if you invest your money, you can see how, where your money is used, you have, you're guaranteed uh, to get your investment back as well. And uh, I, I'm going to leave that at that so I can just jump on the next one here real quick. Uh, the other thing was to harmonize the Kenyan banking system to work with foreign banks. We've seen how the countries, how they've done it. Uh, a majority of the big national banks here, they have remittance accounts and the way uh, they're set to go straight to your account. Uh, less fees and all that. And this is something that we would be working with the National Treasury, the commercial banks uh, to come up with MOUs, uh, you know, on those banks and our banks here in the diaspora uh, to, to, uh, to, to help with that. Um, the next thing uh, here we talked about was introduction of the a financial budget committee on these taxes that are deducted for the remittances that we do. What do they do? Uh, what can we do with that with those taxes that are deducted to continue to help and facilitate better services on remittances? So, introduction of a budget commit uh, uh, of a financial budget commitment on these tax deductions uh, from diaspora uh, on, on the remittances to continue to enhance services uh, that are offered even on the embassies and high commissions too as well. And then we also looked at uh, establishment of the Exim Bank. I know uh, Dr. Martin touched on this. And the key thing on this, we've seen how, for example, the Exim Bank of China has worked, uh, is pretty much copying what they've done and enhancing that and seeing how do we bring that and connect it to our Kenyan people, our, our, our Kenyan people, especially business people who are here and uh, do a lot of business in Kenya, bring business uh, uh, products from Kenya to come and sell them here. This could facilitate that. And then we also looked at establishment of uh, policies and regulations for launching diaspora private equity uh, funds that would provide loans and investments to SMEs. Um, and this will be for diasporans. Uh, that is self-explanatory on there too as well. And then also establish policies and regulations to facilitate the enactment of projects specific to diaspora investment fund. Um, so that still fell under that and the, uh, the investment channels for, for Kenya. We also looked at, uh, uh, with all these things, we know policies and regulations have to be in place for these things to happen. And for this, for us to have Tom, a, you have one minute. Okay, sorry. For us to have a smooth uh, you know, working uh, of diaspora ministry being in charge of these items. And then uh, we also looked, the next objective was to establish policies and, and regulations. And as, as I just mentioned on that, we were also the, 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 the working group of ensuring that we have the forums that every year uh, they can come and evaluate how everything is working. This would be key thing to that to see, do these policies still work? Uh, you know, do they still work the way they're supposed to be? Um, we also looked at uh, things like develop, and then also developing performance indicators for all these things too as well. Uh, the next goal, we were looking at accreditation and endorsements of professionals uh, with qualifications and skills. Uh, one of the things we looked at is establishing a database on regional or global qualification accreditation bodies uh, within the country and the Kenyan embassies to be the host of this uh, of these bodies. Uh, also conduct an audit and determine current accreditation agreements. Uh, of course, definitely there'll be a uh, MOU signed with uh, different professional bodies that are there internationally that could work with, uh, could work with this. And then we also looked at uh, portability of knowledge and skill and innovation. Uh, one of the things was to establish campuses of Kenyan academic institution and work with Kenyans living in the diaspora to facilitate uh, collaborative academic research between local and foreign uh, government institutions. Uh, this issue has been discussed even on the previous calls with the ambassador, this issue also came about. So kind of working on this. Um, also conduct baseline studies on skills among Kenyans living in the diaspora and subsequently develop, uh, subsequently de develop a roadmap of harnessing the potential use of these skills on national development. Uh, we also looked into uh, establishing a Kenya diaspora think tank that would undertake the policy research and advisory for Kenyan government and international governments around the world. 
Um, the other strategic goal we're looking at is promoting the Kenyan brand. So this we would work with the Ministry of Trade to determine priorities and competitive sectors which need in marketing. This would actually go hand in hand in also making sure that we have more missions, more embassies around the world and having um, trade personnel that would continue to promote this brand of Kenya. Uh, so with that, um, you know, I just so once again want to uh, congratulate, uh, you know, I want to thank everybody who was in that committee uh, for the hard work that they did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. But uh, you owe me two minutes. You went beyond with two minutes. Uh, okay. <laughs> now we are coming toward the end. And uh, the next person will be about the summit. I don't know if Professor Shorty is here. Anwar, NDC. Engineer Anwar is not here. No, Professor Shorty had to go to church. OK. Yes. All right. So. Uh, I think I'll take this. So as, as you all know, our president will be here December, December 13 to 16, and uh, he will have a summit with the diaspora. Or we can say it's uh, we, we, we are planning, we are continue planning, and the embassy still is working on it. And, uh, and the, the political wing is still working on it. So it will happen. So you need to prepare for your attendance. And uh, most of those things we are talking here and we'll continue discussing, we'll make sure it pass through to the president before he get here. So I wanna take this meeting back to uh, Dr. Martin for conclusion. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ndonga, Engineer Ndonga for that. And again, uh, Peter, Professor Peter, and yeah, we, we want to really thank you for giving us that uh, uh, leeway to just be able to finish this meeting and also for the yes. contributions that have been had so far uh, we want to thank everybody for that just before we conclude there were people who have raised their hands and they want to i just want to give a few the opportunity especially those who have not been able to ask uh, maya i remember i promise you're going to be next and then we've got uh, cyrus and then uh agri i believe uh, and then Bernard Kavu, I know Kavu, and then of course Rosemary, uh, you can come in next. So in that order, please, uh, just take a minute because we really want to be considerate, but at the same time also look at the clock. So Maya, the floor is yours, please. Go ahead. Um, can I just say thank you very much for organizing this meeting and uh, it's been interesting when I joined in I wasn't quite sure what I was joining into uh, because I was kicked off so many different Zoom meetings so I wasn't quite sure I was joining into. Um, I know there are several groups, um, all who are speaking to leaders in government. Personally, I think it just shows a lot of disunity. And this, it's like we could have a disorganized house because we've got so many different people representing, so many different groups representing the diaspora. My question is, how do we all speak with one voice and stand together irrespective of our political views and how does your, just your regular job blogs access the said leaders and the officers um, who are coming into place? I remember um, um, SG Veronica mentioned several times that the ministry should work for us and that we should have access to the ministry at any given time. How does your job blogs, who is in the Highlands, access these offices where are where is the information where is the the where do you signpost them to and um what priority is being given to kenyans who are in the uk um who are struggling who have got no confidence in the embassy not because of their experiences but because they they're afraid of being outed by the um, are, being, are being out because they don't live uh, in Yamaji, so they don't have that confidence, they're struggling, where do they go and what priority? You know, I think it's great that we have all these ideas, um, investment ideas and stuff like that, but I think that doesn't take into consideration that we have over 300,000 Kenyans in the United Kingdom and 720 registered to vote, and not because they don't all have passports, um, they've got ID cards, but they couldn't go to register simply because a lot of them are scared 
They don't feel like they have the support. I run a passport immigration page on Facebook and WhatsApp with over a thousand people on it. And the stories are all exactly the same. The stories are, we have no representation. We have no one who can speak our voice. We have no one who we can go and tell our, our story, our situation in all honesty and get the right support that we need. And I've not had anyone at all mention, I've had people talking about the Gulf and I've had people talking about and Egypt and all the other places. But if you look close to home, just if if it's just in the UK itself, we have people who are really, really struggling, people who really do need help, but they have nowhere to go. When they go to the embassy, the embassy are people who have come from home. They don't understand the, the hassles of being in the UK doing four or five different jobs. They don't have understand logistics. If you've traveled from Scotland to go to London to go and get your ID done, and then someone says, oh, you're missing this signature, come back tomorrow. How the heck are you meant to do that? So how, what is what priority is being given Outside of everything that we've discussed, what priority is being given to the Kenyans who are struggling and who are dealing with major mental health issues? There's a lot, the level of domestic violence that has risen because of lack of support within our communities is absolutely insane. You know, so what kind of support are we planning? What's the plan or the government uh, planning to give them? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Maya, for that. If you allow me, we've noted that question. And we'll respond to it after. The next <laughs> so let's take a couple of questions and then we can see how we can come to that. Um, I think I mentioned someone in that some specific order. Uh, so in that case, uh, Peter, could you go ahead, please? Uh, thank you so much. I just wanted to say this has been one of the best meetings we have had. This is beautiful. And we all come together from different angles. I am a member of One Voice Consortium, and we too have some different some ideas. But what you shared, Dr. Martin, that what we have got, some of it is on it with what we have. Some of it is an addition, the timeline we like. I think we need to get together. Otherwise, we could overwhelm the president or the government. If we are going with different ideas, if we can put all together. Remember at the end, is what we achieved together, not who did it. And if we do it together, it will be good. And then we can also prioritize what can we start now? And I like your timeline, we can do that. Other than that, gentlemen, ladies, this has been an amazing meeting. We need this kind of meeting, productive, and uh, we, it's a very good use of our two hours, three hours. It doesn't matter, little issues here and there, but you have done it, it's beautiful. And we'll get together with One Voice Consortium, with this team, you have done an incredible job. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. I, I know, I, I mean, I can't thank you any 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 more than what I've, you just said. And we really take that with a, a lot of humbleness and also with respect, knowing very well how diaspora is so fractured and really coming from an elder, and of course, a state person of your nature, we take that with a lot of, a lot of respect. Thank you so much for those You're comments. most welcome indeed. Thank Dr. you. So Martin. Dr. Really Dr. Martin. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Robert Curie. I just wanted to chime in quickly. I had raised my hand earlier, but... Uh, oh, Robert, go ahead, go ahead, Robert. Yeah, I think you're the yeah. one. You're the next one. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Th thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Martin uh, Koyabe and the, and the working uh, group and the, and the many things that you've put together. Just like uh, 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 Dr. Peter has mentioned, some of those things resonate very, very well with what uh, One Voice Consortium has been working on. In fact, we have almost similar uh, pillars and goals and, 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 and deliverables that we have been working throughout. So I think we, have, uh, we can be able to harmonize all these together uh, uh, with what you have so that it can be all inclusive in things that we are doing. Because we are doing all these things for our diaspora our diaspora now and our diaspora in the future. So we need to be cognizant that, that this is not just a political thing. It's, it's much, much, much more than that. We are talking about the future uh, uh, prosperity of the diaspora that is going to impact back home. The diaspora is just like that bee that is out there seeking for honey and that honey taking it back to the, uh, uh, to the hive. The, our hive is Kenya. And so as we are working out here in the in the field as bees, we are taking that honey back home. I mean, and we take it back home in many ways through the the, the, the remittances, uh, 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 through supporting our families and, and so forth. And having this structured way of doing things is what One Voice Consortium has been uh, uh, working on. We have many, many other people that are uh, within our organization. We have 120 organizations that are spread throughout the world. And so, 
uh, uh, marrying all that together with what you have, plus other organizations, we can be able to really work well, well together. So thank you so much for this team that has put up this together. Uh, uh, and I think we will be able to uh, uh, come on board and even steer and get everything moving in the right direction. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Uh, that is actually one of the issues on our timeline of bringing all the groups back onto the same fold. So we are really uh, on, on cue on that one. So let me just give um, the next Cyrus, please. Uh, one minute, please, because time is of the essence. Of time is of the um, <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Cyrus Rubiro. I'm based in Frankfurt in Germany. And um, my point is just to insist on what uh, Robert, Peter, and Maya have said about bringing the organizations together. Because as uh, they have pointed out, we have very many fragmented um, organizations. As a matter of fact, um, we met the CS uh, last week when it came to the G7 meeting, uh, Dr. Mutua, and these were the same issues we presented. And uh, one of the things he said is like, he has already a lot of documents. And um, I remember he started uh, the meeting with saying he was personally, he was in the diaspora, so he understands the diaspora. So um, my suggestion is let's try to come together. I would have a suggestion that we form national um, organizations first uh, from Germany. We are working on that and the, the um, Kenya Diaspora Alliance in Germany and we speak as one voice because um, I'm sure if you go with these great suggestions you have and we already met the minister, we work on the same, uh, they'll not take it seriously. So um, please uh, give a way forward on how we can speak on one voice because um, we need to be listened and they need to take us seriously. Yeah? Those um, just uh, the points I wanted to put across. Thank you. Yeah, noted. Cyrus, thank you so much. Really appreciate those sentiments. I'll, I'll also give a direction on just the thinking within the team so that we can we can share how to do it best. Uh, go ahead, uh, Agri. Uh, thank you, Dr. Koyabe and uh, the facilitators of this meeting. Indeed, it's been a very, very uh, fruitful engagement from everyone. A lot of points have been raised. Uh, I just want to maybe echo uh, some of my uh, uh, speakers who spoke before me, um, in particular, Councillor Kangede and uh, Maya. And uh, I'm passionate about the youth. Uh, the reason why I get up every morning uh, to go and hustle and work very hard is because I'm looking at the next generation. Uh, we haven't, uh, we don't seem to have a very clear roadmap in regards to our youth. Uh, I will challenge everyone on here to just go and uh, look at an 18 year old and ask them who they're gonna vote for for the next coming election. And uh, you might not get a very clear answer. Um, this calls for engagement with our youth and maybe putting in programs and infrastructure. For example, uh, I am uh, Secretary General of Kenya Community Chair Council, um, which is an umbrella organization of all the chairs from different regions in the United Kingdom. And we are looking to facilitate Swahili lessons for our youth. I'm on a forum of, uh, uh, which is also asking questions about the education system in Kenya. Why would I really want to concentrate on the education system in Kenya when my youth here in the United Kingdom cannot even speak a word of Swahili? So my challenge is to the government to engage with the youth in the diaspora and put a program where the youth can feel their part of the government because they are our next crop of leadership. And if we don't engage them and uh, we just think of ourselves as diaspora, then we do not have a leadership because our time is limited on this platform. Thank you so much, Dr. Koyabe. There's a lot I could say, but of course, being conscious of the time, I just want to hand over back to you. But then again, I want to say congratulations for uh, this very, very fruitful engagement from yourself and your team. Thank you very much, uh, Agri, and thank you very much. And I know Lucas uh, will also be pleased. We really, really appreciate your contribution, and Maya, and the work you guys are doing. So we are definitely, definitely taking that. Uh, we have something for the youth, and we shall expand a little bit on it. But thank you very much for that intervention. Uh, I know my chair has actually risen his hand, which is not so it should be the case. I should be able to give him the chance. So, chair, I will yield my your authority. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Kayami. You have done so, so well uh, pushing this meeting. It has gone on for almost uh, three hours now. And that was the opinion that um, 
we may have a lot of people who have issues that they want to, to bring forward. I was suggesting because of time, if we can come up with a time frame when we can share this document to these other various. So my proposal is if you can get in, uh, if you can put out a way that you can get uh, to send this document to all these organizations, and then we are going to give them a timeline when they can come back with their comments or with the addition or anything they want to do. And then from there, now we are going to call another meeting to harmonize everything together, to come up with a true and uh, document that represents everybody. And also come forward with a day that we can bring everybody on, everybody on board to this organization. And those were my, those were my suggestions. Yeah, thank you, Chair. We've taken that uh, on board. Uh, my indication was that end of November, the, all the organizations should be able to have the document. So we'll aim for end of, before end of November, that is. So the last week of November, hopefully, most of the organizations should have that document before we bring it to the ministry for uh, deliberation. So I think that will be good. What organizations can do is to also appoint uh, maybe one or two people whom we can work with because normally organizations have maybe their contact persons. Uh, and if there are any of the organizations and we shall talk to them and give them the direction, they can also subscribe to specific working groups and continue with the discussion because some of the working groups are more specific uh, than others. But we'll put out uh, a way that will allow all the diaspora communities and everybody to chime in and also to bring their new ideas that they have so that we can have a, a very good, solid document before it goes to the ministry. So that one, Chair, we've noted it. Uh, and, and thank you very much. With your permission, Chair, I've got only two people to allow them to talk, and then we shall come back to the summaries. Uh, I think there's, Morris, I know you've given you out some time. Uh, there's uh, Laban, uh, I think, and then the engineer Maxwell from Qatar. Uh, and then, of course, our very own Bernard Carview. So let Bernard Carview go first, because I think Bernard had a chance, but he didn't talk and then engineer Maxwell, and then we'll go to Laban. And then most likely we'll be able to summarize at that point. If you've talked, please just allow me to allow others to talk so that we can be able to be as democratic as we can. So curve you, please. Bernard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Koyabe. It's been a long wait here. <laughs> I can I know, see. I know. It's been a great, great meeting. I, I, I think in some of our private conversations, we said, yes, it's good to bring people together. Let's share ideas. Let's know. My main concern has always been what's the way forward. Now we are, we are done with campaigns. Politics are behind us. What's the way forward for diaspora? And I think this is a very, very good starting point. We've all come, we've listened. At least we have an idea of where we are going. Uh, like I've said many times, and also uh, other speakers, uh, Dr. Langat, he knows we've been agitating for our County 48. Uh, what what we are, what we need is not really about the diaspora county 48 it's bringing all kenyans together and um our, our, our position is there's no need of reinventing the wheel there are people okay uh, the president during his inauguration he said he's going to elevate the county 48 so some people were rushing to say oh then let's create county 48 but what i want people to know is we've been in this for the last five years we've been working on this and what you've said we've got our charter which we, we've been working on as the executive of county 48 we are going to submit that to your committee so that everything that we've put there can be integrated Most, um morris uh Dolly also mentioned that uh we participated uh, in the drafting of the diaspora policy. So a lot of issues which are being discussed have already been documented. All we need is bring them together. Now, my suggestion would be, uh, there are so many organizations in diaspora. Um, if going forward, we could have a way of creating, if it's a committee or a council, or whatever structure you're going to come up, where you can put these leaders together and then we can speak, like the gentleman from Germany said, they already met with the CS. Now the CS is going to hear from so many different places until he will be confused. So if we can all come together under a structured, um, uh, say council or committee or whatever name we want to give it, and then we speak, 
not just to the government, but also to the diaspora people, where we can say, going forward, these are the representatives of diaspora. So people know who are the people to go to, like Maya was asking, what's, what's the point of reference? Who do we go to if we need this and this? So I think today was great. I've really enjoyed this from the beginning uh, up to this point. And I think if we can build on this, uh, finally, diaspora is going to be effectively uh, involved and engaged with the government. So thank you very much. And I still ask everyone, do not say I belong to another organization. Diaspora County 48 is for everyone. With your organization, we have members, people, individuals who join. But it doesn't matter what organization you represent. It's so long as you are in, in diaspora, you are automatically a citizen of Diaspora County 48. So please join us. Uh, come give your views, interact. We've got Kenyans from every corner of the world. So there we just discuss diaspora issues. And it's nonpartisan. It doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. So uh, mine is to extend a welcome and say, Let's forge forward. Let's create a structure where we can say these are the representatives of diaspora. So when we approach the government, we don't go as Germany is saying this, US is saying this, UK is saying this. We have one committee that represents all diaspora. I think uh, that's, that, that would be the best way forward. Thank you very much for this opportunity. That noted, uh, Bernard, my colleague, and my fellow countryman. Thank you so much. Uh, Frank Laban Molua. In that order, please, one minute. Frank. It was my chance after, after. Oh, Maxwell, oh, you disappeared again. Okay, please, Maxwell. Yeah, uh, thank okay. you, Dr. Engineer, Koyabe. engineer, go ahead. Thank, thank you, Dr. Koyabe. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I am the chairman of Kenya Qatar Diaspora Circle. I also double as the chairman of Homer Bay County Diaspora Community. And I know we are under pressure of time, and therefore I'll be very brief. Now, uh, uh, I want to speak briefly in one minute on the on this pillar on the welfare. Now, I am in the melting pot of where Kenyans have gotten very bad treatment um, uh, when, when they come to work in the Middle East. And I would be very happy to contribute towards uh, the issues that are affecting the Kenyans in terms of their welfare, in terms of their issues. There are many, we cannot say them here at this point in time. So what I'm saying is that I'll be very happy to contribute. If we want to get the crude, real and true information, deal with the uh, community leaders around the globe. Now in our circle, we are able to uh, interact with the lowest cadre up to the highest carbon in the, in the labor market. And therefore, we'll be very happy to make our contribution, to give you our ideas, and that would make it great. So I think in the interest of time, I'll stop it there, but I'll let you know, we have 55,000 Kenyans <coughs> working in Qatar. So Qatar is, I think, one of the smallest countries yet with very high population of Kenyans. One of the experiences we have had is that the Philippines, for example, ensure that even those who come to work here as housemaids, there is a very serious policy. The government negotiates for their welfare and their treatment is much better than all the others. Now, we may take that direction as part of our contribution so that the Kenyans who come to work here will find the labor issues and welfare taken care of. When you talk about people living in very bad conditions, when they go out to work, we have seen it firsthand. So we will be very happy to make our contribution towards the working group as a diaspora circle and uh, any other group that you may want to involve us. Thank you very much for the opportunity. God bless. Yeah, thank you, engineer. Uh, I think you've really touched on some of the issues that we've been trying to work around with. Uh, Wanja, who gave a brief in that particular pillar, uh, will be very keen to get you there. There's also Masi. Uh, who is also working there in that particular team. So we'll make sure that we get in touch with you. When we widen up the scope, in fact, that's the time I think you can be able to get in. But when we share the document, invest, you know, review the document, and then you can add whichever part. And then as the chair said, we'll call back this meeting so that we can be able to go through what new ideas have come in. Uh, again, I want to call, thank you very much, Maxwell, for that. So Laban, uh, Mulun, please go ahead. 
and then we'll have uh, Dr. Mwala, Mwala Lip, I think, I think that that's the way I read it, but we'll have that. Mwala, Thank so you. That order. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. My name is Labano Pande. I'm assuming that's the name you call. <laughs> and if not, I'll just take advantage and then the other Laban can come later. Um, sure. I'm the chair of the Kenya US Bar Association lawyers, uh, Kenyan American, Kenyan and Kenyan American lawyers basically in the US, about 150 members strong. I'm also involved with the East African Chamber of Commerce, uh, a trade uh, organization that has been having trade conferences over the years. I'm also involved with the One Voice Consortium of, with Dr. Diangui and Dr. Shiri, uh, with a group of uh, uh, tens of groups, uh, perhaps even hundreds of groups um, worldwide. And of course, there are other local um, organizations within where we reside. Now, this is very useful, but I think uh, we, my suggestion is we have to be very orderly. There are so many um, objectives or issues that are common to all diasporians because we, we cannot assume that uh, all the issues are the same because they are different depending on the regions where we are. And some are very, very in-house uh, whereby they may not resonate with everyone. Uh, for purposes of engaging with the government, and, and I'm sorry I came a little late, but uh, I'm assuming that um, uh, this is what uh, the objective was. And by the way, this has been very useful. I was in another meeting the other day and it was just very chaotic. And I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that there is very order and, and um, decorum in these discussions. But what I was saying is uh, if we can be able to identify, and maybe I did hear there's a document, there's a working document uh, that we can look at and, and chime in on. Uh, and narrow down on those issues that are very common to everyone, whether you live in Rwanda, whether you live in Qatar, whether you live in UK, uh, that, that those can be harmonized to the, to, the, to the sense that it's a policy now that the government in Kenya can adopt. Now, the ones that are unique to the regional areas, because even in the US, we are very diverse. It's a whole continent, so many states, and from one area to the other area, it's very different. Uh, same as Europe and same as Asia and Middle East. I mean, there, there's some local issues which are very pertinent to those. Then those can be given now to the uh, local leaders, whoever who is in that region, to come up with some kind of framework, which of course can be harmonized by this group or whichever group through the ministry uh, for purposes of accounting and, and of um, uh, uh, giving services to the members of our community in those areas. Um, we have had also, for example, here in the U.S., um, efforts to do to have a, a free trade area uh, agreement. Uh, and I did hear the gentleman who was speaking about some objectives in terms of economic and having uh, platforms and avenues for investment and, and so forth. All those are also, you know, they have to happen, happen within a certain uh, legal regime. Uh, and so, therefore, it's always important to understand what is the legal regime in the country that you are vis-a-vis uh, -vis the one in Kenya and how do we support uh, those who are making the policies in Kenya to harmonize those. So I think there's a lot to do. Um, the good news, I think, if we all have uh, the goodwill, um, and I, I did hear someone say we have passed elections and, and campaigning, and, and so we, we are, you know, the, the we are where we are, and, and, and we have very limited time to, to, to produce other than having to fight and, and be kind, and which, are, by the way, you know, takes away a lot of energy and a lot of people from uh, contributing to our, our growth. Uh, then we should be heading somewhere. So we look forward to seeing the document that is in place. Uh, and I think, uh, like someone said, I think there's going to be a follow-up meeting uh, to sort of uh, uh, harmonize the way forward so that we are clear all of us are clear in, in how we're moving forward, what is expected of us. And even when we are talking to um, our leaders from, from Kenya, uh, we have a common front and we're very clear and coherent on what we are sharing with them. So I yield back to you, Banache, and thank you for everyone, and especially those who are organizing this platform. I yield back, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much uh, again through Chair to just thank you, Laban, for that, uh, those comments. The idea around diversity of problems has been noted. Uh, we know, for example, Canada is a huge country, so they have different problems based because of the scale and just the land mass compared to other countries that are smaller and, and having very large population. So I think that 
diversity of problem has been noted. Uh, we'll take there. Uh, we'll definitely yeah. definitely share the document, and, yeah. and feel free to expand on specific areas. Sorry, Doctor Koyabe. Before you proceed, uh, please take note that we must stop at two p.m. Sorry, time okay. in ten, in 10 right. minutes. Please. That's right. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> Molua, one minute, and then I think Doctor Mwala, please. Please. Thank you so Please. much, uh, so much Dr. and uh, the people who are hosting this meeting. It has been uh, one of the best meetings. We appreciate and we are expecting many, many more. I am John Mulwa Damboki. They call me chef here. I'm, I'm in Canada, Hamilton, Ontario, and I appreciate being a part of this community. Um, I have three issues. Well, my first issue is uh, tribalism in the diaspora, which affects the next generation. We have a uh, we, 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 we tend to, especially the, not the older people, I'll say the people who've been in the diaspora for long, they tend to have these two groups, 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 uh, which are kind of tribolic. And if you compare those with the, with the upcoming generation, they don't really care about uh, the tribes and where they come from. So I would encourage us to have, uh, to encourage people to stop being tribolic and uh, <clears throat> concentrate more on uh, issues that can help uh, grow our country, especially from this side. Because what we do back here affects back home. What unyumbani wanaangalia chenye tunafanya na wanatutegemea sana. My other thing is to talk about uh, how, how um, about the drought back home. I'm sure maybe I joined late and I'm sure this was spoken about, but I'm just wondering how and who can chair the issue of drought back home and uh, how can we participate as the members in the diaspora? I've had so many people call me and ask me how they can do that. Um, there can be a way that we can help. And I'm very sure this uh, leadership here, the, 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 the uh, the, the, the diaspora people, I mean, the diaspora leaders can do that. Uh, the other thing is about the voter the registration. How can we, I mean, can we encourage involvement of the Kenyans in the diaspora um, in the voter the registration rather than sending people from back home? I know they are, it can be done. We can work. Uh, we can work with the people who are in the diaspora. So thank you so much. I appreciate this time, and God bless you all. Asante. 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 Mula. We'll come back to you on the drought issue. There's an initiative already ongoing. Doctor Mwala, did I say that correctly? Go ahead. Oh yes. Um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Robi, for giving me a chance just to make a statement. And uh, I have posted in the chat a statement because uh, I was thinking that I might not have the chance <laughs> to make my comment, but um, I can just read what I put in the chat. Sure, then, sure. Yeah, I emphasize the point I want to make. And in the chat, I said, among us Kenyans in diaspora globally, we have so many organizations, small and big, functional and non-functional, effective and non-effective, some with the self-centered missions, others with the Kenyans at heart, and so forth. This does not prompt, promote unity. It divides us. We need to have a directory of all these organizations, bring these organizations together, give them time to present their organizations and their missions, and mark a way forward for working together by forming a strong alliance, it doesn't matter what name we are going to, to give it, but we need an alliance which will build a common front through which uh, issues affecting us will be packaged and put together and develop a paper which is going to present those issues as seen by the Kenyans diaspora. And having saying this, I have just to introduce myself further. I, have, I am a member of the Ken, Kenyan National Council of Elders in Diaspora, which was set up to promote working relationship between the diaspora people and the Kenya National Council of the National Kenya Council of Elders, which is in Kenya and which is constitutionally founded because the, found, the government found that there was need to bring back 
a council of elders, which used to be so effective in mitigating conflict within our communities. Every community in Kenya and the elders play a major role. And I'm glad that the government reorganized this, recognized this and formed the Council of Elders in Kenya. And they are well constitutionally placed. They are housed in the Ministry of Cohesion. And that is why we formed the Kenya Council of Elders in Diaspora, so that we can create a link between what is happening at the country level and what we are doing here. Okay. Our organization is supposed to be inclusive of all these people, and I'm sure when an opportunity comes for each organization to present themselves and their mission and what they plan to do, we will be able to give you a detailed uh, presentation of the Kenya Council of Elders. Asante, Asante. To make, which is very strong, is that of the 48th county. For those of us who have not seen the structure of the 48th county, maybe this is the very institution we are looking for, which will help us to mark a path for presenting our issues. The structure is very good. I've studied it. It is really global and it is inclusive. And each one of us who have got these organizations can actually fit in very well somewhere within that structure. So I'm yeah. just saying my prayer is that a meeting like this one is going to stimulate a need for us to get together for my direction of the organization and from there, I give them the chance to present, and then we'll be able to move together. We need to avoid what we saw last night. There was a meeting last night, and I tell you, I was not pleased to be in that meeting. We are sorry for that. We are sorry for that. And it was, it was, it actually underpinned what we are discussing here, that the need for us to get united is very, very, very important. Thank you so much, Dr. Kayole, and I, in fact, I'm glad that you moderated this meeting so well. It is a, really a big contrast between this and what we went through last week. Thank you for your kind words. And we really take that uh, into consideration. Uh, we have noted your input. Uh, I know there's a team behind me that is actually taking notes as we speak. All these charts are going to be reprinted and then we shall scan through each point by point so that we don't leave anybody as uh, comment or ideas behind. So that's something that I can assure you. Uh, Oliver, just Olivia, please be ready. Go ahead, Olivia. Uh, and then uh, Rosemary, just one minute. And then I know I've got to stop. Olivia, then Rosemary, uh, please go ahead. Hi, it's not Olivia, it's me, Mercy. Um, oh, Mercy, you're appearing as Olivia, sorry, <laughs> Mercy. Oh, I didn't know, okay, thank you. Yeah, because... Um, my, one my minute, one minute, Mercy, one minute. Yeah, my, my laptop has not been working, uh, but what I did is uh, I noticed that time has gone on. So what I wanted to say is I decided to respond that to the page uh, because many people don't know that we are setting up the Scotland chapter. So if anybody wants to come and join us to come and develop the Scotland chapter, please you're welcome to come and we all put all these ideas together. So yeah, I am responding to the text into the messages because I realized time is gone. And I okay. put my email there, yeah. For those of you who want to know Marcy, Marcy is based in Scotland. There's a lot of work Marcy is doing. I think uh, Marcy, you'll be given an opportunity for that. But thank you very much for your intervention and for leading the work in the group with welfare. Rosemary, I will thank never you. forget you. Please go ahead. No, 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 no. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll be very brief, really, okay. take that less than a minute. Just to thank you so much. Of course, there was confusion uh, in the beginning. And thank you for putting together this meeting. It's gone on very, very well. I mean, some of us came in, we were a bit unhappy. Lakini sasa, temperature mekwenda chini. And we thank you for that. And we thank the secretariat, the team that did this. Uh, now, I like that uh, you are able to take a valid criticism. There are many things that have been brought up on the issue of voting, on um, regions. You know, Agri brought up that issue of, uh, of Swahili. Uh, you know, as most of you know, as a former broadcaster, uh, Swahili, Kiswahili is my middle name. You know, I speak Swahili better than... Um,